Hi everyone, I'm here with a Bible study. I hope you guys are having a good day. So today we're going to be in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 16. And the devotion is by Susanna Foth Altman. And the verse she picked out in Matthew 16 is two verses, which is 24 and 25. And they say, Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Because through Jesus, you know, is eternal life. That's the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. You have to be saved through Jesus. There's no other way. Okay. So now I'm going to go to Matthew 16 and read that. And then we'll come back to Susanna's um, devotion. and the Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven. He replied, When evening comes, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky but you could not interpret the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation looks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Jesus then left them and went away. And of course, you know, the, their hearts are hardened and they don't know what Jesus is. Sorry, it's hard for me to talk anymore. And getting all out one breath is really hard. And uh, they didn't know what Jesus meant by the sign of Jonah. Sign of Jonah. Jesus was talking about, because Jonah was in the belly of the well for three days, before God released him. And Jesus, you know, will be, he will be crucified and he'll be in the tomb for three days. And then he'll be raised from the dead, remember? That's what he's talking about. That's the sign of Jonah. When they went across the lake, the disciples forgot to take bread. Oh, this part. Jesus is like, <laughs> you'll see. They forgot to take bread. Be careful, Jesus said, to <laughs> Jesus said to them. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He's talking about their teachings and stuff. Be on guard about what they say because what they say is wrong, okay? They discussed this among themselves and said, it is because we didn't bring any bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, you of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000, and how many basketfuls you gathered, or the seven loaves for the 4,000, and how many basketfuls you gathered? How is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread, but to be on, but to be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he was not telling them to Guard against the teach sorry. Guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When Jesus came to reign region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist. Why? John the Baptist, I never understood this, because John the Baptist was there 
the very same time Jesus was. John the Baptist bat bat baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. They were there together. So how can they say Jesus is John the Baptist? That never made sense when people said they thought those people that thought that, you know. So some thought John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him because he loved him so much. He was like a brother to him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would have come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory and his angels. And then he will reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. All right, and that was Matthew, all Matthew 16. Sure, I'm still awake. Wow, I'm listening. Start thinking of your animal, your animal, guys, for the. Animal devotion. Okay, now we're going to Susanna's devotion. And let's see what she says about this chapter. She says, I have taken great joy decorating a new home. I have been saying things like pops of collar and impact and a mix of modern and farmhouse. Scott bought me some bright yellow pillows that have the phrase, Hello Sunshine, embroidered on them. Oh, I would love those. I would love those. I feel a zing of happiness every time I see them. How could you not, right? I love them. The only problem with all the decorating is that I want to do more decorating. It has unleashed the beast within, the beast that says, I should have everything I want right now. I have worked hard to tame this beast my whole life. It's my selfish self, the part of me that only thinks about me, lives for my own pleasures, and could care less about how my actions affect anyone else. I'm not going to lie. Giving in to the beast is ugly. There is no pop of collar when my life is self-centered. Jesus has something to say 
about my giving in to the beast. He asked me to deny myself, selfish self, and follow him, the least selfish person in all history. The life of freedom and hope that I am longing for happiness, uh, sorry, and hope that I am longing for happens when I stop chasing after pleasing myself and start chasing Jesus. Thought I was like reading that wrong, but that's, that's worded weird. It unleashes the true impact of his love and grace lived out in me. Amen. You ever read that? You like read something and you're like, that don't make sense. I must be skipping a line or something and then you look at it. That's exactly how it's wrote. Like they forgot to write a word in or something that don't make sense. But it makes you look crazy <laughs> when you're trying to read it. That's what the sentence was. Okay, your homework uh, from Susan is Are you struggling with the beast within in any area of your life? Confess it to Jesus. Ask him to recenter your heart and mind on him. Okay, guys. That's right. Don't be selfish. Put Jesus first. God first always. All right. Let's do our animal devotion. Has everybody got their animal picked out? Pictures like you're on that one. Look at that one. Look at that Jimmy's thing. I'll just show you guys the picture I drew. See the little lizards down there? That pretty snake? There's a tarantula I tried to make. I made a web, but I don't think tarantulas have them. <laughs> I don't know. I like to try to decorate the page. You know, to make it pretty when I'm doing these for you guys. And then I show them to you, you know. I don't know. I think it gives it a little more cheer, you know, to the next person who gets the book. And might be a person who, like, doesn't want the book messed up, but might give them cheer, I think. I'd like to get a book that looked like that. I just think it's nice and pretty and cool. <laughs> anyway. The um, Bible verse is Psalm 1829. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. Amen. You can do anything with God. The um, title to this is called The Anol Whisperer. And it is by Linda S. Clare. So let's read it and see. It looks like it's going to be about a lot of animals. Huh? I stood in our living room, dread washing over me. My son's pet animal lizards, named Jack and Jill, had somehow escaped again. Ugh. Before he left, my son had insisted they were harmless, but I wasn't convinced. Animals weren't as repulsive as a snake or a tarantula, but I got goosebumps just looking at those bulgy eyes and scaly green skin. And now they were loose in my house. I prayed for strength to safely herd them back into their tank. The first lizard skittered back into the terrarium without incident, but Jill, or was it Jack? zoomed across the wood floor and ran straight up the glass on the patio door. I grabbed a small net and told myself to get over my fear. This is for your own good, I muttered as I slapped down the net and just missed him. Halfway up the glass, he stopped and froze. I couldn't bag him without injuring him. 
and although I officially detested reptiles, the more I studied him hanging there, the more interesting he became. Vertical surfaces didn't faze him, and the delicate pink and white touches under his neck displayed God's handiwork. Before I knew it, I was murmuring to this six inch long wonder, encouraging him to reunite with his roomie. As I coaxed the animal home, I thought about all the things I'm afraid of in life. Afraid of all reptiles, I particularly scout a wall trying to avoid Jack and Jill in the past. But now this little animal was teaching me to learn about whatever I fear as a first step to understanding. And as I take the time to understand what I fear, I become able with God's help to face it. When my son walked in, he was amazed to find me whispering to a lizard. He gently put the animal back into its tank and we laughed. <laughs> and that was her emotion. That's, that's cute, wasn't it? That was a good one. Thinking will not overcome fear, but action will. W. Clement Stone. All right, guys. That is the one for today. I will go get the next ones for everything set up. And it'll be for Monday. I'm going to give Sherm the day off tomorrow so he can rest up and everything. He's not feeling very well. So um, I'll have everything ready for Monday. God willing, you never know what's going to happen. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow or Monday with another uh, Bible study. Bye, guys. God bless.